Hi everybody, welcome to Double Tap. <laughs> well, I didn't think that was the hand sign. That's the double tap. Oh, oh. That's not the closing, the signature closing. Okay. Right, I'm Richie, Jamie DeGrazio from the Digital Lifestyle.tv. We're gonna tell you what's going on with the iPhone. Frankly, for our first real show, it's kind of a slow week. Yes. But we do have Halloween coming up. Oh, and how does that relate to the iPhone? Because, Plenty of Halloween apps, probably. Right? Well, we're gonna look at one. But because some folks made some iPhone costumes that uh, were better than anything we had this year. Take a look. So that's pretty clever. Yep. If you want to walk around with a, a big screen in front of you and they hack the iPhone. Well, so that's the cool thing. Somehow they got the video out of the iPhone, which we've been trying this, to figure out how to do that for a while. If you see this video, get in touch with us because we need to do that for some things we're, we're working on in the labs. Um, also, I want to tell folks about, th there's a cat here. <laughs> Just in time for Halloween. There's a cat, but he doesn't want to stay here when he hears about this app. Uh, it's Pet Cemetery. Yes. Now, Pet Cemetery movie based on the Stephen King book. Sure. From, uh... What, what year was that? I don't know, but the movie was 20 years ago. Okay. So you did, you did the math. <laughs> you can figure that out. <laughs> I know in the movie. I don't know when the book Fred was. Gwynn was in the movie. Herman Munster, right? He was in it. Sure. Uh, theme song by uh, the Ramones. Okay. Great, great song by okay. the Ramones. Okay. Well, not great song, but a decent song. Decent song. Decent. We'll call Wonderful. It decent. Well, let's take a look at the app. The cat, that's, I remember the cat, that cat was creepy as hell. Now the game is based upon uh, shooting, killing cats. And really? Dogs, and dogs. And that was, and children. And, and how, do you, how do you kill the cats, dogs, and children? Well, you shoot them, of course. With a handgun. Um, I don't know. So you got this overview of the street, and you're gonna want to eliminate the dogs, the children, the cats, and the birds, and not the people. So that's the basic. So it's like a shooter? Well, but you're looking down like this. Yeah, like a top-down shooter. How do you control? You move your guy. You just tap on them. You're oh. the guy to move. So, like that dog. You just tap on the cats to kill the cat. Yeah. This game seems horrible. As a cat owner, I am <laughs> offended. I am by this little, game. I am a little surprised that it made the uh, the cut into the into the app store. I can't believe it. Yeah, this is pretty offensive. And I usually don't get offended by. It I, I almost wonder if it had been an independent developer rather than Paramount if it had been uh, approved. So, anyhow, that's the idea. So, you're calling it Worst App. I'm calling, yeah, I'm calling it pretty offensive. I, I don't know, I'm, a, I'm a, a pet owner, an animal lover, you mm -hmm. know, I'm not, I don't wear a Mike Vick jersey. Oh boy. Uh, you know, I, I give to uh, Greenpeace and PETA. Okay. I do eat meat though, but yeah, I call that app offensive. Like, I, the baby shaking app really didn't bother me, maybe because I don't have a baby. Right, if you had a baby. <laughs> but just killing cats. Now, I understand the cats are supposed to be like zombie cats, sure. but from the graphics, you can't really tell that they're zombie cats. It just looks like you're killing cats and, and kids. With a gun, no less. Yeah, with a gun. So I'm surprised that got approved. I'm not sure it really translates the heart of the movie in this game. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it has anything to do with the movie. Okay, well, it's 99 cents, and I don't know about you, I think I do though. <laughs> I've been burned a few times buying apps for 99 cents or more that weren't really that yep. good. So, I have as well. So let me throw an idea out there. Gaming subscription for the iPhone. So how's that gonna work? You're gonna pay, what, 10 bucks a month? 10 bucks a month. And what? Do whatever you want. Use as many apps as you want. Any game. Load it up, they'll, play, they'll pay a small you know, royalty to the people who made the game. Well, it doesn't sound like a bad idea, but I think it's gonna get sort of brushed aside by this whole uh, in-store app purchasing. Mm. So all the, all the games are going to be free anyhow, first level. Right. And then if you like it, you'll pay 99 cents for the next three levels. Or Good point. For, you know, additional weapons, what have you. So that, that's kind of, it looks like that's the way they're going. So I can't retire on that. Either. No, you can't. I do like the idea of, um, of somehow allowing you to test a lot of these games. Mm -hmm. It seems like those are the, the, the apps that you get burned on the most, the games. Right. You want to be able to squirt them, like the old yes, squirt. Yes, yeah, squirt from, yeah, from one <laughs> iPhone to another. Well, one way to know about games for consoles is an app that you found. 
Yeah, so, uh, so there's a service called Gamefly, which mm -hmm. is sort of like Netflix, but for um, but for console games. And they just came out with an app called, uh, I guess, Gamefly Game Center. Okay. So let's uh, check it out. And uh, for the most part, it just lets you uh, scroll down to find your favorite, you know, favorite games for whatever console you own. Um, okay. Most popular. You can see the newest release releases. Click on the, the title. Gives you some info about it. Um, sometimes they'll have a little you know, rating. Sometimes a preview video. Um, so you're not, it's not really an account management. Well, no, there are those, I'm getting to that, Ryan. Okay. So. Um, also some a news feed because uh, Gamefly is actually owned by, um, uh, or maybe they own uh, uh, Shack News, which is a gaming website. I don't know who, who bought who, but they're together now. Okay. Um, so there's, I guess they're just pulling in the, the, the news feed from Shack News. Mm -hmm. um, you can read about the, the Netflix story that we talked about the other day, now on the the PS3. Okay. Um, and there is, if I can get back to it, yeah. Um, and if you do have a Gamefly membership, you can actually set it up here. Okay, cool. And uh, I guess manage your, your, your game queue. And mm -hmm. there's some hooks in the Facebook and Twitter. Um, now, Gamefly is primarily for the consoles, right? Yes, and the, and the handheld games too. Okay. Yeah, I used to, have, I used to be a member of Gamefly. Um, it worked great. I mean, you know, you pay, I forget what the flat fee was, 12 bucks a month or whatever, and you can have out two at a time, and then mm -hmm. when you're done, you, you ship it back. And my thing was, I found myself at least, is the games that I really wanted, I just wanted to purchase anyhow because I wanted to own them and play them longer than, you know, right. a month. Right. And so I was just basically using Gamefly to test out, like, the, the, the B and C and D grade games, okay. which I realized... I didn't really want to play any. That's why they're BC and D. Yeah, so I just canceled my membership. But but for people who don't want to spend a lot of money on games, you know, mm -hmm. games are sixty bucks. Um, it's I think it's great, and this is a great little app. So GameFly, obviously, the Game Center, it's geared towards their own customers. Maybe some value there. If you're not a customer, it's free. Can yeah, I mean, I, I mean, there are some you know some game news populates through the app, but I think you're you're probably going to download this if you have a GameFly account. Otherwise, probably not much. Doesn't make much sense. Very good. Now, last week on our super secret beta show, yes. we were talking about ESRB ratings, the fact that Apple doesn't have them. And in Australia, apparently there's a push to the, for the Australian version of ESRB to be added to the iPhone games. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know this. Maybe you didn't know this either, but Australia, um, you figure a very liberal country, you know, down under, beach, sun, sand, <laughs> uh, corona, I kangaroo. Don't know, kangaroo. Sure. But at, at least with their video games, they're kind of strict. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of console games that don't come there or are censored heavily. heavily. Um, so I guess the ESRB in Australia said, hey, you know, um, there's a lot of iPhone games and these aren't rated and we can make some money here because the developers would have to pay to have their game rated. We can protect the children. We can protect, the, yes, the children need Not protection. Not make money, yes. come on now. Um, but I, I guess Apple, at least so far, has said, hey, we're, if, if this becomes some sort of state law or countrywide law, well, I guess we have no choice but to go along with it. So you could see ESRB rated games in Australia and then perhaps eventually that'll move over to the US and Europe. A lot of money, a lot of money to be made protecting the kids. I'm just thinking maybe I should give up this whole TDL thing and we should start a, uh, a competing ratings service. Yeah, just like, I would just simplify it. Just a thumbs up if it's like, uh, if it's R rated, it's good. Thumbs up and okay. then if it's like G, just thumbs down. Well, I don't know about thumbs up and thumbs down, but I know one thing. What's that? Until next time, pinch and stretch. <laughs> Excellent. Bye everybody.